I know the power of autophagy and I'm learning more and more every day. Like I know what it does. I know what fasting does. I know how, you know, it just gives us a chance to reset. It gives our body an opportunity to heal itself from all the toxic garbage we've been doing. I know how to lose weight and I know how to lose it effectively. But what gets in my way is my mental health. I've been self-sabotaging myself because I feel like I don't deserve to be in the position I, I'm in. I don't deserve to be a personal trainer. It's like, what the hell? How do I stop this? You feel like crap? Fake it until you make it. Tell yourself that you are strong. Tell yourself that you are fit. Tell yourself that you will, you know, get to your goal weight. Tell yourself these things and then convince yourself and then believe it because it's that self-belief that will get you over those obstacles. Even if that biggest obstacle on your block is yourself. They say life is a game and I feel like I'm losing. Oh my God. My brain will not leave me alone. Picking yourself back up after hitting rock bottom is where the magic happens. I'm trying to tell myself this, but I feel like I have like, there's something in between my chest here that's like sucking all my energy. Do you know how much I've filmed over the last couple days? A lot. <laughs> filmed a lot. I just edited a video. But I'm looking at this video and I'm like, who is this girl? I don't recognize her. I filmed this video a couple weeks ago and like I'm on point with everything I'm talking about. Like I'll put a clip in here. Fair chemicals back in the 1970s. Our food is laden with all these dyes, all of these chemical preservatives that have been linked to cancer, that have been linked to obesity. They're literally called obesogens. And fasting helps us combat these obesogens. Like, who is that girl? I feel like I'm battling two people. Like, I'm battling the Daniela I want to be. Like, the, the person who you saw last year or earlier this year. The person who rose through adversity. Who lost the weight. Who didn't care what people thought about her. Who was going to overcome. Even if there were, like, people, you know, manufacturing drugs in her building. She didn't care. She just focused on her goal. And then there's this Daniela I'm fighting. The one who's just completely like beaten down where the thought of going back to work makes me want to just fall apart inside and I think I'm just it's just overwhelming it's overwhelming and I'm trying to figure out because I know I'm very intelligent I like I love to learn I wish I had all the time in the world to sit there and just like take university courses and just learn 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 like I'm super intelligent I want to I absorb information I keep it and I store it and it stays in my head I know how to lose weight. I know the process of weight loss. I know the power of autophagy and I'm learning more and more every day. Like I know what it does. I know what fasting does. I know how, you know, it just gives us a chance to reset. It gives our body an opportunity to heal itself from all the toxic garbage we've been doing. I know how to lose weight and I know how to lose it effectively. But what gets in my way is my mental health. My mental health is killing me and it doesn't help that my partner came, I don't even know if he's my partner. I still haven't posted that video. That's another thing. There's two videos I need to post. I thought I wouldn't post it because I didn't want my channel to become gloom and doomy, but I'm trying to be real at the same time. Um, One video is going to be about staying in a relationship because you are financially dependent on the person. <laughs> and the other video was going to be about motherhood destroying my life. Keyword there is motherhood. Not my child destroyed my life, motherhood. So everything around being a mother. And it's not so much the parts involving my son. It's the parts that, <laughs> it's complicated. It's the parts around it. But, you know, loss of career for me, being injured, that part. And I just like feel like I'm trying to get myself out of my hole. Like I feel like I, I had a good rhythm. I never thought I would be here. And I fell flat on my face, but in all of my son's wisdom and glory, you know what he told me? He's like, it's okay to fall. You can just pick yourself back up again. And I'm like, you're right. You're right. Thank you for that, buddy. But whew, it's overwhelming. So I saw my therapist a couple days ago. We just talked. I caught her up on everything. And she was like, that's a lot. You know what she said to me? She told me what happened to me was not my fault because I completely blamed myself for everything. I blamed myself for the reactions people had at work. I blamed myself for overreacting about the whole, you know, meth thing. I blamed myself for all of that. I don't even know why. She's like, only a part of it was your fault, but not the whole thing. But I gathered from our conversation, it is my responsibility to pick myself up. 
and that's where I feel stuck. So the first therapy session we had was just a talk therapy session. The next one will be EMDR because I don't know. I have I have um, Prozac. It's actually Prozac sitting um, in my medicine cabinet, but I don't want to take it. <laughs> so I'm just like here. I don't think Prozac is the right medication for me. My GP prescribed it and I've never taken it. And it can cause manic phases in people. And when I'm super depressed, I feel like my um, mental health shows up as bipolar too. So this is like a journey for me, quickly. I started seeing a counselor in 2013, off and on. And I did it because someone close to me encouraged me to, because they noticed I struggled with the little things there and there. Saw a therapist, introduced me to mindfulness. Then the whole debacle happened with my body, giving birth, getting injured, being in pain, and not being able to exist every day without trying to survive and then things went really downhill and then I ended up being in the hospital for two months and then there I got diagnosed with bipolar 2 to begin with generalized anxiety anxiety disorder and um, emotional dysregulation traits and then that bipolar 2 was revoked after they watched me in the hospital for about two months and it is now major depressive disorder not otherwise specified and through my journey with seeing people and seeing another doctor mental doctor um it's trauma it's called cptsd that's complex post-traumatic stress syndrome um like even as a child i remember like no 11 year old child should be having the thoughts that i had no 11 year old child should be having thoughts about unaliving themselves. They shouldn't be, right? But I did and I kept it to myself and I just went through it. So this is something I've always struggled with, but I always, but there was like that second part of me that's like, overcome, overcome, let's overcome, let's do this. Like there's a positive side of me and there's a side of me that destroys myself. And that side of me that destroys myself basically is a network that I learned as a child, what I received from my caregivers, what I got from the trauma is telling me that I am not good enough no matter what. No matter what I can do, I am not good enough. And I have to kill that network. And that is what we're gonna do with MDR. And that's why I'm self-sabotaging myself. Well, I pretty much was. My body today was like, you know what, girl? You have no choice but to eat healthy. So I have been. Um, I've been self-sabotaging myself because I feel like I don't deserve to be in the position I, I'm in. I don't deserve to be a personal trainer. It's like, what the hell? How do I stop this? <laughs> like the most scary thing with mental health is that ugh, when you're giving it your all, but it's not enough. But I have to take myself back and remind myself that this is like just a next level of life. When you're at a point of evolving to greater blessings, the battle and the obstacle is gonna be even harder. So I'm trying to tell myself that, but it's really difficult. I'm really having a lot of problems staying at the present moment. I think talking to you guys like right now, if I sit here and I look into the camera and know that I'm gonna be connecting with people, there's a bit of calmness there, but I'm, I'm trying. So my goal was to meditate one minute a day. I've done that every day except for today. I will do that after I come on, but the mental health side is what is getting away. It's getting in the way of my weight loss journey and it's getting in the way of my life. <laughs> and um, it's tough and it's not fun because I always use work as an escape, as an opportunity to prove myself, show myself that like I'm better, but my workplace is toxic and I don't wanna go back and look at certain people because they screwed me over. But again, I do have a new manager who seems amazing and I want to meet her, but I'm just, I can't get over this and I'm trying to. I had my EMDR session this Friday at 12, but ooh, it's, it's hard. But I want you guys to know, I'm documenting this A, for me to go back and see how much I've overcome and B, to, con B, to, to connect with you who may be on the dumps and down and outs and show you that like, it's okay to fall. And this is what rising looks like. You're gonna be knocked down, knocked down, knocked down. Like, honestly, I feel like today I got work done. I was productive, but I feel like, like as soon as I get a moment to myself, I feel like I can't, like, I'm just so, like, I can't, I can't relax. And that's not me. 
And I just feel like my body and my nervous system, my nervous system was a wreck for like years, especially after the car accident, having your, that nerve, that vagal nerve, just, it was being pinched by the neck injury. So just being in a constant state of high heart rate and um, shallow breathing and dizziness in the brain and all of that, that was a lot to go through, but we do not get these obstacles unless it's there for a reason. It's there to propel us to higher heights. And I think the key in our struggle is to find peace within the struggle, is to make one small grain of progress. No matter how small it is, it is still a win. Whether that mean eat one healthy meal, whether that mean do one 10 minute workout, whether that mean, you know, going outside for a walk, getting up to out of bed, having a bath, some form of self-care, which is so key. We neglect ourselves so much in this hustle and bustle and it just needs to change. It needs to change because I feel like the world would be a better place if we had more people focusing on their self-care, but it's super hard out there. Things aren't easy, you know? The state of our economy and the state of, especially here in Canada, <laughs> like, we're in a bad state. I'm trying to move to the States, guys. That US dollar. <laughs> All right, that US dollar, this Canadian dollar, and it shouldn't even be like this considering all of the resources we have here in this country, but we're not gonna go down that rabbit hole. <sighs> but through it all, we have to remind ourselves that this journey here on earth is temporary. And maybe we shouldn't take life so seriously. Maybe we shouldn't just, you know, just have fun while we're here, you know? Lean on love, lean on help. Like I, the biggest reward I get is helping other people or raising my son. <laughs> That's another one. That's like the biggest reward I get in life um, are those two things is really connecting with people and helping them know that they're not alone in their struggles because we are so isolated in our struggles and to grow a community of people overcoming. That's what I want. Like so many things that get views on the internet are just narcissism, drama, fitness drama, people talking about other people. Who's natty or not? Who's doing this? This roid head is getting mad at this person. This person throat slant. Yeah, this is all the stupid fitness content. Like the fitness community is so toxic. It is. And when I say the fitness community, I feel like the bodybuilding community is incredibly toxic. It's just so toxic. Powerlifters like encourage each other. And I have a bad taste of bodybuilding in my mouth. And it's so sad because I know I have the frame to be an awesome bodybuilder. But my experience with pe dealing with people on roids is just, ugh. Um, I just, stuff I see online, it's always drama, 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 drama. Like the fitness industry, whether it be bodybuilding or this influencer, it's just so toxic. It's just gross. But that doesn't mean I can't create my own little corner of this industry and create a place to uplift people or a place to motivate people to get healthy because exercise truly changed my life. And my mental health goes to crap when exercise is taken away from me because of injury, you know? like. Right now, like, I, I don't think I can. I don't know where my lungs are. Maybe I might try to go to the gym tomorrow and see. But that's what I turn to. And if you have the capability to do that with your body, be grateful for it. Because not everyone has that ability. People are fighting cancer. People are fighting chronic ailments that have them in bed all day. Maybe people are fighting chronic migraines or a severe injury and it's taking them time to get back to where they are. But to those who are struggling with injury, please know that you can still progress in that injury as long as you have the guidance of a proper trainer and a proper physio that's giving you the right exercises to do. You may not be able to, you know, deadlift 400 pounds, but you can do little things to help the muscles get stronger so when you are ready, you don't put yourself in that point of injury. Like there's always a silver lining, there's always good in every situation. Anyway, this was just a rant. Um, I was gonna post a video, um, but I feel like a hypocrite right now. Like I really feel like one, the video's so good. It's just so much information on keto omad at all. Like I'm watching it myself. It's a really good video, but I think I'll put up this one today. 
just to say that I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, guys. I'm trying to get out of this. It's just I'm in a lot of pain. <laughs> my heart's in a lot of pain, and I don't know why. And I feel like my brain, a part of my brain, is just torturing me. But I got to hang in there and know that there is a silver lining to things, that I will be seeing my psychologist too, that soon, that I'm blessed to even afford psychology because they're expensive, and that I even found a good therapist, that I'm blessed to have each and every one of you on this journey with me. I'm blessed that I have a roof over my head, that I have a car, that I don't have to wait for Calgary Transit. Like, imagine that. I had transit all of my life back in Toronto. I don't have that here. I have the luxury of having a car. You know, I have a beautiful son who loves me. And, you know, ugh. So I gotta lean on that. I'm safe. I'm love, adored, safe, and secure. And to everything else that doesn't align with that, who cares? Who cares? Why give it your time? Our time is limited. Why give people things, circumstances that don't serve us the time? There's no need. Anyway, this was just a little sit down video, just talking what's on my heart. If you're going through a tough time, please know that the process of picking yourself up hurts. But on that other side is so much confidence, is so much resilience, is so much just evolving on the other end. And I know it doesn't feel like it. Even when you feel like crap, do one thing that will lead you right into that direction. If you feel like crap, fake it until you make it. Tell yourself that you are strong. Tell yourself that you are fit. Tell yourself that you will, you know, get to your goal weight. Tell yourself these things and then convince yourself and then believe it because it's that self-belief that will get you over those obstacles even if that biggest obstacle on your block is yourself but the most beautiful thing of yourself being that biggest obstacle is that you can also be your biggest hero anyway i'm gonna go deal with this anxiety i'm sending you guys mad love hang in there and if you made it this far into the video type in the word butterfly because we are going to transform like a butterfly anyway send you guys my love